Well, welcome back for the fourth year running of our year-end reviews, Top 10 Movies 2017. It's, it's Four been a years good year. A slave. It's been fantastic. Yeah, it, these guys been. love doing it. All right, so before we get on uh, the Top 10 list Let first, me first tell you that, yet again, my yearly disclaimer, I do not do this because I want to. I do it because I'm a good friend. I, love I, can't, I can't claim that I didn't come here of my own free will tonight, but I'm telling you that I only do it to support him and his buffoonery and delusions. Okay, whatever you say. Anyway, so before... Because I... a good friend enables their friend's delusions. You don't? Right? No, I'm just kidding. I usually crush his ge- yeah, dreams. I say, you, you, when do you ever today, enable delusions? Today, I will allow you your last delusion of 2017. Excellent. All right, so before we get into the top ten list, you have... I'll th- tell you what the real... Shut best up! No. You have 30 seconds first yeah. to say any honorable mentions or dishonorable mentions. Okay. And then, then one of us will do our six th- uh, 10 through 6, other person will do 10 through 6, 5 through 2, 5 through 2, 1 and 1. All right, all right, all right. So I got some dishonorable all mentions. All right, go for it. Mostly just big disappointments. Okay. Okay? So I was hugely disappointed in Logan to start off. Here and we go. I, just a really, let me just really quick just say why. And the reason is, and I know a lot of people loved it. I'm vastly in the minority here. But I'll tell you, it was every, I, I, what I was promised was Wolverine like we've never seen him before. But instead, we got the same character development we've seen in Wolverine in every X-Men film. We had essentially all the other X-Men films shucked away as pointless because we don't even know what happened to the X-Men exactly. And it seems like the filmmakers think we don't care. And, uh, in the end, it was just a depressing, sad story that, sure, had a good end and had a good redemption, but it was the exact same Wolverine we've always seen. He was just old and decrepit this time. It really wasn't anything special. It was actually incredibly disappointing. Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is also very disappointing. As a huge fan of the first one, I loved the first one, thought it was fresh, thought it was new. This one was arguably funnier. It might have even been funnier in the first one, but the plot sucked. It went nowhere. It was not good. Didn't like that. Um, those are those were two big disappointments to me. Uh, also, I didn't like it all, which I know you think it's a masterpiece, but I didn't like the War for Planet oh of the Apes. Again, I say I'd rather just watch apes fight each other and have war <sighs> as opposed to some. Yes. Yeah, anyway, so that that was a disappointment, though I didn't have high expectations for it. And the only other thing, I'll, this disclaimer I'll put out there before I say my list, is that there were actually, this year, a number of movies I really wanted to see that I didn't get to see. So, this list could well be edited later. It's it's the ten best movies that I saw in no, 2017. But there was a number I didn't get to the chance to see. Like, I really wanted to see um, Loving Vincent. That no, looked sure, incredibly, that it looked incredibly artistic, of course, artistic of Vincent Van Gogh. Also, <laughs> best title of any movie this year, Loving yeah, Vincent, yeah, big yeah, fan. Yeah. So I really wanted to yeah. see that, didn't get the chance to do that. I didn't get the chance to see Coco um, or Cars 3, so either the Pixar yeah. movies of this year, um, which I had interest wow, in seeing. Wow, that's a first. Um, I didn't end up getting to see... Uh, what was the other one I was just thinking of? Oh, I don't, I doubt, highly doubt it would have made the list, but I, I probably will see Justice League at some point. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, were the, oh, and I didn't get to see Jumanji, which I wanted to see. I fun. didn't get to, I, mean, I, I hope to see that one. I haven't seen Disaster Artist yet. Solid. And I haven't seen, um, I feel, felt like there was one other one, but either way, as like at least six or seven movies that, I didn't get to see that I would have liked to see that would have had a chance of making the top ten list. So do you not have any honorable mentions you just have? No. Okay. And, and that's and that's mostly due to the fact that a lot of the movies I wanted to see I didn't get to. How many movies did you actually see this year? I have no idea, but I, I, I have a top ten. I had some that I didn't like, and I have some that I want okay. to see still. All right, good yeah. deal. All right, so now go ahead with your uh, ten through six. No, no, you do your honorable mentions. Oh, we're going to do... Okay, all yeah. right, fine. Uh, hold on, let me get out my list. Yeah. <clears throat> You don't. Uh, we're not pretending like your honorable mentions are more important than no, my no, no, no. But I'm just saying. I was thinking we would do the honorable mentions no. and then just do, you our do ten. Your okay, that's fine. Mentions. Okay, honorable mentions include. Uh, you mentioned some of them. Uh, Jumanji, really funny. Wonder Woman didn't quite make the list. Spider Man Homecoming didn't quite make the list. Alien Covenant didn't quite make the list. I was a huge fan. It just barely got bumped out of the top Huge 10. Huge mistake. Never should have watched really, it. Nobody watched really it. Really, really no. great horror movie. Hitch, I mean, it, it, Hitch is great. It is a terrible movie. Don't watch it. Baby Driver. Good movie. Didn't make the top 10 list, though. Just because that's the way I am. Disaster Artist. Great movie. <laughs> Dishonorable mentions include Justice League. 
Kingsman the Golden Circle. I'm sorry, I just can't get behind those films. Valerian, that movie was really weird. Cars 3, it was better than Cars 2, but it still wasn't great. Worst movie of the year, The Circle. That movie sucked, which is a shame because it had Tom Hanks and Emma Stone. Yeah, what's Watson. great? I wanted to see it, yeah. and I heard it was awful. It was terrible. All right, 10 through 6. 10 Go through for 6. It. My number 10 was Wonder Woman. All right. I. Uh, it was a solid movie. Like I said, had I seen some of the movies that I uh, had wanted to, it might not have made the top ten, but as things were, it's made my top ten thus far. Yeah, it was, it was solid. I liked it. Um, it helps that Gail Godot is easy on the eyes. Uh, and, you know, it was just, it was, it was a, it was a pretty well done movie. Um, I thought the, the script was good. It moved the well. The first really good DCEU film. And, well, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even necessarily say it was really good, but I'd say it was good and it was solid. And I would say that it was definitely the best DCEU film oh, yet. hands down. Hands down. Um, number nine. Uh, my number nine was Spider-Man Homecoming. All right. And I'll say, I actually think Wonder Woman might have even been a bit of a better movie than Spider-Man Homecoming, but I'm just a sucker for the Spider-Man character, and I had a bit more fun with it. It was a bit more entertained. Yeah, sure. I liked the old Tony Stark being in it. But I will say, overall, I am kind of sad. While I like seeing Spider-Man in the Avenger movies now, and I loved him in Civil War, I am kind of sad that Marvel took over, because even though this was a decently solid movie... I just, before it, when it was just the Amazing Spider-Mans and the original Spider-Mans, yeah, it was, it was something different. It seemed, the mm -hmm. Sp Spider-Man seemed a bit above the cut of the usual generic superhero movie, but this one was totally Marvelized, and while it was still, as Marvel does, it was still a good movie, they're really good at making good movies, they can't really make great ones, yeah, and really that's just how I feel like it's gonna be now, and it was a very Marvelized, formulaic Marvel movie, and so... I appreciated that the stakes were pretty low and it wasn't saving the world and that was mm -hmm. kind of that kind of befit the teenager thing which was good but yeah, it did. overall it was good nothing special. Okay. Number 8 was uh Murder on the Orient Express. Pretty fun. Really movie. enjoyed it. It's done very well. I guess um, I could also put that on my honorable mention list. Yeah. It didn't make the top 10. Murder on the Orient Express was a good one. Um you liked it more than Wonder Woman and Spider-Man though? Yeah, I did. Huh. I did. I, I, well, I, I, I maybe even just because it's something like a little different than like a superhero movie. Fair so enough. I, I really did enjoy Murder on the Orient Express. Uh, all the acting was superb. Um, I think it leaves just a little bit to be desired in terms of the intrigue and building suspense, but oh, sure. it, it was still done pretty well. I haven't seen the old one, which I, I do hope to watch the makes of it as a classic, but I liked this one. Number seven, uh, Thor Ragnarok. Um, that... I found it just hilarious i found it hysterical fun. super entertaining and did exactly what it needed to do which was be a hysterical super entertaining i need to blow my nose so bad number six baby driver well i don't think, mention for me yeah well i don't think that it is quite the brilliant masterpiece that some people think it is seriously i still think <laughs> that it was really well done and the main things that propel it to be number six on my list this year would be that, uh, obviously, the music, great soundtrack, and the music being synced up with all the movements and all that oh, yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah. That fun. was actually pretty brilliant. Really cool. It had probably the best car chases I've seen in any movie, bar none. I'll give you that. Um, the only problem with it, I thought, was it seemed a little bit caught in between, like, is this just a joke, fun, entertainment movie, or is it actually more serious? Mm -hmm. Because it, it felt really caught in between that. Like, sometimes it seemed like, oh, these are actually some serious themes, like, we're supposed to take seriously, and then sometimes... It felt like just like a, you know, like popcorn flick, fun yeah. driver movie. And so I thought it was a little bit caught in between them. Didn't know exactly quite what it wanted to be all the time, which is my only issue with it. But aspects of it were brilliant. Overall, it was fun, and I would say just a good movie. Sure. All right. So my 10 through 6 coming in at number 10 for me. I actually did a re little readjusting today. Number 10 for me is actually Dunkirk. It was a little higher. You know, it, I love Chris Nolan. He's my favorite director. This wasn't my favorite of his movies, but I can still recognize it as a really, really captivating film, uh, incredibly well directed, and yeah, it just wasn't what I was expecting, and like I said, I'm not saying it's a bad movie, I just like other of his movies better, and other movies this year better than this, so that's just the way it is. Right. Coming in at number nine would be Split, which is I M. Night Shyamalan's one, latest film. Uh, I was super stoked for this movie coming in at the beginning of last year. It totally delivered. It paid off being a big M. Night Shyamalan fan. I can't wait to see what they do with... Because uh, they're 
I don't know if you know the twist at this point, but they're continuing the chapter in that universe, so I'm really excited. Huge fan of that film. I was pleased. Coming in at number eight, one you didn't get to see, that would be Coco. Oh, yeah. I do hope to see Coco. This sometime. movie, uh, you know, as I said, I had a little issue with the way they handled some of the uh, Land of the Dead stuff. You know, they kind of, even though... You know, the Day of the Dead stuff. And a lot of Mexican culture is very uh, primarily Catholic. You know, they totally eliminated the idea of heaven, which frustrated me, but I can't deny it. The story was still brilliant. Incredible animation. I cried multiple times, both times I saw it in theaters, so it, it had to be up there for me. Coming in at number seven, that would be The Greatest Showman. Ah, oh, that should be higher, okay. you fool. Look, this movie went from I'm being... I'm still so annoyed at you, right, okay. having your stupid grievances with it. Do you know how high this it. is? This, this went from being on my dishonorable list to honorable mentions list, number ten, yeah, to and, number seven. and you're seven. just getting more and more sane. And if, you know, with more time with it, it probably would have gone even no, higher. No, no, I, I thought about putting oh it a little higher, gosh. but at the end of the day... You I hate just, fun. I mean, I'm not surprised. I've seen it three fun. times, okay? I, 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 think it's, I think it's a really fun movie. Also, is that season one of The Office? Yeah, you That's want, mine. Yeah, it's season two's right there. Yeah, they're both mine. Yeah. Was, those are mine! I was going to give those You never gave those back to me. You never asked me. Well, it's on Netflix, <laughs> and so I never really need the DVDs, but they are mine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you'll get them, you want them back tonight? Yes, I'll, yes, just go ahead. Okay, all right. Yeah, so, you know, like I said, I love this movie, but it does have a couple of flaws, which is what kept it at the number seven spot. It's not a perfect movie, but the music and musical elements are fantastic, so that's why it's at number seven for me. I'll just wait till I get to talk about it. And Hugh Jackman is great, too. Just go. And coming in at number six, fantastic movie. Blade Runner 2049. Oh, I want to see that, too. That was There's really good. There's so many good. movies this the year first, I didn't get to see. You did miss Some really of us have one. a life. It's hard. Blade Runner... Yeah, shut up. I have a life, too. I just... I Your have, life is the I movies. have movie pass, okay? That thing is awesome. Uh, I but need to see the first Blade Runner still, too. The first Blade Runner is pretty weird, but the second one I basically consider a sci-fi masterpiece. It was almost three hours long. Denny Villeneuve, who's done Sicario and Prisoners and Arrival... He's made yet another fantastic movie. Prisoners was so good. I, he's one of the best directors working right now. This movie was great. Ryan Gosling was great. Harrison Ford was great. I do want to see that one. It was exciting and really made you think. So, yeah, I was a huge fan of this movie. My number five uh, was, let me think. Uh, what was Lego Batman. My really? number five is Lego Batman. Oh, that's hot. That was hilarious. It was... I and I would say okay. the my most pleasant surprise of the year too. I did, had no expectations for Lego Batman. I you I, would put that and above it, Wonder Woman, Spider Man, and Murder on the Orient. Without Express? question. Without question. In fact, I would say my six through ten are good oh movies. My gosh. One second. My six through ten are good movies. My five through one are great movies. Like, there's a definite cutoff at five for me because five through one were movies that I basically couldn't have been happier with. And, well, basically. But anyway. And then ten through six were just good, solid movies. And there was a definite cutoff there. So number five, Lego Batman. It's hilarious. It's Will fun. Arnett absolutely kills it. So many quotable moments. So fun. I loved Lego Batman. All right. I enjoyed it, but I didn't think it was any number was four. The first one, and this was a big debate for me. I, I I struggled and pretty much only came to a decision while you were talking, and I was of course zoned out yeah. earlier. Uh, I I debated between three and four a lot because they're and night and day I movies. They're going. night and day movies that I can't compare. But for me, I ended up choosing, and we'll see if this was the right call. But I think my number four is Dunkirk. Okay, I liked it a lot more than you. I think, yet again... I don't, I don't know if that's true. I just saw more movies than you. That's true. But I, but, still but really I actually do think it's still pretty much a masterpiece, actually. Oh, I, would, I would say it like, probably is. I just didn't... Dunkirk... Me personally, I didn't love it as much as I, I might have. Right. Dunkirk, and, I, and I'll explain why I didn't make number three when I say number three, but Dunkirk was still a brilliant movie. Oh, sure. Um, I understand why some people don't like it, because it's actually not super entertaining, but it was classic Nolan in that, in the end, you realized... That is just a brilliant piece of filmmaking. Yeah. How everything weaves together. I was actually quite confused in the middle too, and and I was someone who Didn't actually you wasn't fall really. I was nodding in and out, but I was exceedingly <laughs> exhausted. That was a hard week, right. and so I wasn't enjoying it at first. And I was thinking, this is the first Nolan misfire, and I was having more trouble following it. Like 
I had no trouble with Inception, Prestige, some of these other, like, a bit more complicated mm. plots that Nolan's put together, Interstellar, none of them. I had any trouble following. Okay. This one I had a little bit of trouble following, but then the final act of it I think is incredible, and you really do have to try to pay attention for oh, the yeah. start of it, but the final act of it, the way it's all weaved together, the redemption, some of the characters, and they really Characters told a really cool story in a really interesting Most way. Most unique that I think war movie. Very unique. Ever made. Very unique. And in the end, I think, did the story justice and was actually just a brilliant movie. Yeah. I, um, I so I, I hats off to Nolan. He does it again. The man's just a wizard of film. I can't wait for his next one, whenever and whatever oh, that may be. Oh, of course. Be. It'll be at the um, top of my most anticipated list. And number three, The Greatest Showman. <laughs> and I will tell you what, in terms of entertainment value, this could have possibly been number one, but there are so many good movies this year. The Greatest Showman is two hours of pure entertainment. And I'll say right off the bat, because some people have some issue with this, if you're looking for the story of P.T. Barnum told truly and accurately, this is not your movie. And I'll tell you, if the filmmakers were trying to do that, they would not have made it a musical, okay? Because some... I, I, I've done, uh, I I've done some research... No, I've done some research... There's a play called Barnum, I, I know, but I've done it... I've done some research, and this is not... It's not in, definitely not entirely accurate about P.T. Barnum. It's not like... Oh, it's, he's a jerk. They the take, well, they take some liberties, as any Hollywood movie does. It's not entirely inaccurate either, but it's really not meant to be like the story of P.T. Barnum all that much. It's really yeah. just meant to be a fun musical, and they just decided it's to use this story. It still could have been a smoother told story. It, okay, okay, okay. Here's the, This is what I'm trying to get people <laughs> to understand, is that the movie, and this is why everyone, for the most part, loves it, it's not about that. I guarantee you what these filmmakers thought was, this is actually a pretty interesting movie. This is an interesting premise to make a musical out of. Not, hey, let's tell this story. And so they use the premise. They tell it decently accurately. But it's not about the characters, really. It's not about the plot. It's just about what a fantastic musical it is. Which I mean, is these why songs will be stuck seven. in your head. It's, oh, fantastic. it's just two hours of pure entertainment. And as you calculated out, there's a song about every 12 minutes or so, yeah, about. which is crazy. And every single one of them is so fun. I don't think it's definitely... It, it does what a musical should it's do. It's definitely it not keeps... my favorite musical ever, but I can say of no other musicals that there's not a single... In, in this movie, every single song I love. And I don't think I could say that of any other musical, even though there are, there are other musicals that are much more powerful love. and have songs that take you to better heights and are more meaningful yeah. and impactful. This is just... Fun. It's Tons if you're fun. if you're going into a movie looking for fun entertainment, this is p two hours of pure fun and pure entertainment. And I've talked to people who don't even normally like musicals, and they still love this movie. Wow! It, it, it's just fun. And Hugh Jackman has always proves he's the triple threat. Uh, he can so sing, he can dance, he can act. He's fantastic. Um, others that I'm typically skeptical of, like Zac Efron and Zendaya, not been. They were good. They were very good. They were really good. Just a fun, great movie. My number two, Beauty and the Beast. Another musical. So um, good. It was just, it was everything you could have wanted, I thought, out of the live action capture of the animated classic. It's very true to the animated classic. They do a couple things differently. The only thing I think they really messed up was they changed the guest on song, and they actually only changed it for the worse, I thought. Still a fun scene, and I like some of the dancing, yeah. but I thought, why mess with the guest on song? And I don't think it's quite as good. Other than that, Everything else was great, and the songs that they added in were all fantastic. Uh, How Does a Moment Last Forever? Fantastic song. Evermore. The Beast song, yeah, Evermore, so good. And so it's just like everything you wanted out of like a, a, a live action. Fan of fantastic. It's, yes, it's. I understand people. It is not as good as the animated version. I don't think it is either. But. If we're going to have a live action version, I'm glad we have this one. It was fantastic. I love Beauty and the Beast. They did a fantastic job. Yeah. Disney has been killing these live action remakes. I'll give you my thoughts on that when I mention it in my list because it will be there. Oh, yeah. Coming in at number five is Logan, something that this man did not appreciate. Because it's, it's actually not good. Everyone's okay, being fooled. No, no. This movie, though... It's it's Brutal void of meaning. It's and void of meaning. Depressing. I found it really captivating. Hugh Jackman gives an incredible performance. I don't know yeah, why. Yeah, he does. But yes, Hugh Jackman's always incredible. But the movie's void of meaning. What? what vo void of meaning? Yeah. Okay. You, you sound really pretentious when you say it that way. But anyway, no, no, no. This movie it was super heartfelt. I, I, I'm trying. I'm not really exactly sure where it fits in the X Men universe because so many different movies. It's kind of hard. But <laughs> 
that being said, it maybe was the most overrated movie of the year. Super emotional seminar. I wanted it to be so for good. the Wolverine, for Professor X. It was really exciting. Um, yeah, I, I had a great time with this movie. Uh, number four, another one you didn't see. One I didn't see in theaters, but I watched twice in a week because I really loved it. That would be Get Out. This movie was awesome. I can believe that. It was one. like, it had I like a... I don't think it should be number three. No, it's number four. four. Either either way. Number four. Okay, the thing about this no, movie... No, I didn't see it, so I don't know. I, you know I, I love a good suspense thriller, and this one had a really strong Twilight Zone slash Hitchcock. I'm still pretty sure it's supposed to be a comedy, and you don't well, even it, understand It was that. really funny, too, and it, it, it... Like, I think I said, I sort of... It made me feel the same way I did when I watched Ex Machina. It's a really simple plot, very dialogue-driven, but it's so captivating, you want to know where it is, and then at the end... It hits the fan. It's exciting. It's satisfying. I it love this movie. It hits the fan. The saying is, "Shit hits the fan," shit hits the and fan. that's for no. But that that doesn't even make any sense in this context. You that, haven't even seen. The no, movie. when you say "shit I hits was, the fan," I though, was trying to make it family friendly. I understand okay? that, but I, I'm saying. The but sentiment, then you said no, it, no, so no, I was just going to be the like. The sentiment whatever. of that saying is like. That's when like things get real and like. That's exactly what happens. Real. Yeah, but I I still don't think whatever. Just go ahead. Shit hits the fan, and then it resolves. Oh, and now look who said it. You, you said it first. Low. You said it Sorry, first. Sorry, kids. He's an animal. Yeah, yeah. You know what? It's because I, I'm around in Apologize bad company. to their mothers. No. Wow. I'm sorry, mother. Now he refuses to apologize. <laughs> Shut up. You said it first. Coming in at number three is Star Wars The Last Jedi. This it should is a, be higher. You know what, this is, okay, so I decided, I think this is better than Force Awakens. Way I, better than Force Awakens. Force Awakens is definitely easier to watch, though. I'd agree, but... This, but this movie, it has some fantastically exciting stuff in terms of space battles, action, story. I love what they did with Luke and Rey and Kylo Ren. The whole casino, cantina... Could have been cut. Could have been cut, could have been cut down a little slow in the middle, but I remember the first time I watched that movie, that last hour... I had no idea where it was going. I was yep. so enthralled, yep. so into it. I'm glad Yoda showed up. Great Star Wars movie. I can't wait to see what they do next. He didn't even say spoiler alert. Yeah, because everyone's seen it by now. Yeah, let's, let's hope so. If people are watching this, they've seen Star Wars. I should hope so. Go ahead. And coming in at number two, you are not going to like this, sir. I know. you're War I'm not, I'm for you the list. Planet of the Apes. Okay, I take it back. Holy Logan's not the most overrated crap. movie of the year. War this for the freaking Planet of the is Apes a is flat out it's a lie. masterpiece. It's a lie. Okay. There's not even a war. I will give you... Okay, first of all, there is a There's war. There's a minor battle. The Yes, the, the title it should have is been called, misleading. It should have been called it's, Minor Battle for the Planet of the, the Apes. The war... They are talking about the war that has progressed throughout this entire trilogy. The war that happens... The, the psychological war that happens within Caesar, it is such I a, can't deal with an this. emotionally driven story. Just, it's just uh, not watching good. the first two back to back right before seeing the third one. You forget you're watching Apes. Andy Caesar is incredible in this movie. I love this movie. Andy Caesar? Did I say Andy Caesar? Sorry, I'm Andy Caesar. <laughs> Andy Circus kills it as Caesar. You forget that you're watching an ape. You think you're watching a real person. Apparently, you forgot too because you blended the man's Shut name up. and the ape's name. I was talking fast and I was excited. But anyway, this is my second favorite movie of the year just because it was an incredible, it was exciting, it was action packed. Not as much as this guy wanted, I suppose. It uh, wasn't action packed. Yes, it was though. It was, yeah, it was about as action packed as Driving Miss Daisy. There's and, nothing okay, in there. Okay, whatever. You haven't even seen that movie. Yes, I have, multiple times. Oh, okay, fine. I thought okay. You were, whatever. And I thought it was a great conclusion to, honestly, one of the better a trilogies w that we have. It's like a mountain. I mean, upside down. Isn't aside that from Dark Knight trilogy, uh, Toy Story, oh, oh my and Lord of the Rings, this isn't as good as those, but aside from that, this is the. Yeah, it's not as good as this those. This is a solid trilogy no, coming through. No, it's this a half-baked mediocre trilogy. I love it. Okay. That... Uh, 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 stupidity. <laughs> okay, and you I'm not even... You are in a very much minority here. I don't care. Well, no, I think most people no, don't people care about the eight movies. False. A those lot who people... have seen it are like, oh, yeah, oh, it's so good. I'm telling you, you, your average passerby does not care about the eight it's movies. It's because they haven't seen it. Yeah, because... They're not worth really... Okay. The second one's good. We don't need to go into this right now. <laughs> My number one, as should have been his, Star Wars The Last Jedi. Now, again, again, I'm going to tell you, 
when we made our list lap two years ago, I think I put The Force Awakens at number one. So I'll tell you, I'm just going to tell you, That's true, I dude. am susceptible to just the Star Wars hype. I just love Star Wars. And unlike, yeah, good. unlike admittedly more serious Star Wars fans, I don't hate Star Wars. Because <laughs> uh, I've heard it said, and I think it's very true, that no one hates Star Wars more than Star Wars fans. <laughs> That's not a bad thing. But, uh, you know, and, and I'm obviously a huge anomaly when it comes to big Star Wars guys because I love the Phantom Menace, and I'll defend that till the day I die, but we don't need to get into that. Anyway. <laughs> That, that just discredited me with anyone watching this at right now, which is probably nobody at this point. But either way, just hear yeah, me out. Just hear me out. People love watching Hear me out. The Don't Last worry. Jedi, and I will admit, there are some definite flaws. For instance, it does drag a bit in the middle. The casino planet should have been cut out, probably, if not at least, substantially cut down. Yeah. The only good that comes out of it is the kid, who then is at the end, sure. in the ring, which I love that kid, and I love that motif. But um, Rose... Very much wedged in their character. Don't think she should even exist. The whole casino planet and that whole adventure just seemed like an excuse to give Finn more screen time because they realized they didn't have much for him to do. Yeah, yeah. And so that I, I'll admit that wasn't great. And I'll admit coming into the movie, what I really wanted to see was Luke get back in the action and see Luke Skywalker again. But if they weren't going to do that, I thought they, they handled it the best that they could. I'm kind I of a nerd. I never wanted to see Luke ever get beaten. And he's never beaten. It's he true. just decides to become one with the Force after doing the coolest Force maneuver we have ever seen, which was super awesome, and I loved. And um, he saved the galaxy one more time, because if he doesn't show up, all the Resistance people die. Pretty much. Um, like, you, you hit the nail on the head. The main reason that I loved it was because, I'll admit, it just satisfied what I wanted. What I wanted was, after Episode Seven. The more I think about it, the angrier I get. Because though I'll admit, it's still We're a not very, going stop. into a Force Awakens. Very, I know it's here. still a very enjoyable. Well, I have to talk about this to talk about it. Fine. Force Awakens is still a very enjoyable, like, well done movie if you take it on its own. But yeah. the fact that it just restarted things, I hate what it did to the the line of the saga, That's and like true. essentially created again an Empire Rebellion type dynamic. And they yeah, should have just taken things true. in another direction, and instead they started to side over and make the new hope again, but different. And I, I just get more and more angry every time I think about that. See, that but doesn't bother me at the all. Last Jedi fixed it. You know, it fixed it. And Ryan Johnson decided to shuck away everything Abrams did, basically, with the very Definitely beginning the of that unique. shucking away the lightsaber thing, which I loved <laughs> because he, in some ways, ruined this trilogy. But, but then Johnson saved it. And I think okay, he did not. He like for instance, not for instance, for instance, this is to so some people a minor thing, but to me was huge. Was the line of Luke saying that for years there was balance? Because it's very important to us, so that Episode Six isn't worthless. That actually, you know, we got thirty years in between. It yeah, seems as true. though there was at least twenty, twenty-five years of peace and balance, and then things went crazy Look, again. And I, that makes me feel a lot better that everything you see in Episode Six and that victory isn't hollow and worthless. Yeah, and I so, never thought it was. I think what they do with Kylo Ren, what they do with Rey, what they do with Luke, keeps you on the edge of your seat. Most movies like this end up being pretty predictable. The whole last hour of the movie Super is unexpected twists. You have no idea what's going to happen. Very unpredictable. And that's why I actually think it was brilliant. And in the end, seeing Luke Skywalker be at one with the Force, like I said, after saving the galaxy one more time, doing the most cool Force movie I've ever seen staring at that double sunset oh. the first time you ever see luke Great in this, a, a new hope new he's staring at that double sunset yoda's line of skywalker always looking at the horizon and this motif of all right luke saved the galaxy a couple times now he's had his time but it'll move on and there'll always be somebody who will rise up and at the end you see that kid staring up at the sky just like luke it's beautiful That's and so stuff. i think in the end it ended up being though it certainly has flaws overall a brilliant movie all right good stuff so my number one, the movie that was never dethroned after mm -hmm. March, Beauty and the Beast. Holy crap, Great I absolutely love this movie. Great movie. It was, if any of you guys actually watched my review, you know what I was talking about. But this movie, I love Disney. I love the live action remakes they've been doing. This movie was so awesome. I haven't felt so happy coming out of a movie at all this year as much as I did for this movie. I saw it five times in theaters. Never got sick of it. The, Five times. I could, I could never. The time I saw it was on a date that ended badly. <laughs> and I was afraid it was going to ruin it for me. But it didn't. <laughs> this movie is that good. It's bad date proof, people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I love the songs they added. Evermore. How can a moment last forever? So emotional. 
And it wasn't as funny as the and animated. Days in the Sun, I forgot to. Days also in the Sun, one. that's true. Uh, it wasn't as funny as the animated. No. Um, yeah. But, you know, I honestly was more engaged with the love story in the live action, I'm not going to lie. Maybe that's just because they were real people. I Okay, it's just, it's not as good as the animated it's version. It's not as it's good. It's still great. I'm it's just still saying, just a great movie. Yeah, yeah. I, my favorite movie of the year, I, I've seen it so many times, I can't wait to watch it again at some point. The only other note I'll have for anyone who's made it this far, which is maybe... Everyone. No, probably, you know... Concordia the, people, I know you're still yeah, watching this. the strange Concordia <laughs> people who've gotten this far, that's probably it. But uh, for anyone who's gotten this far, I'll only say, just to toot my own horn a little bit, my anticipated list for the first time ever actually kind of hit the nail on the head for what, uh, at least the top half of it, for what I liked, because... Oh, my anticipated okay. of last year was Star Wars 1, Beauty and the Beast 2, Dunkirk 3. Right. And ended up being 1, 2, and 4. And Dunkirk was good. nearly 3. So I was pretty mine, happy with that. Aside from Star Wars and uh, Beauty and the Beast, mine was pretty different. So for me, it was a year, though, of, of a lot of movies really hitting the mark. And I'm glad the ones I really wanted to hit the mark did hit the mark. Yeah. But then also ones like Logan and Guardians of the Galaxy being huge disappointments to me. fantastic. So it was kind of a mixed bag in that way. But All right. So there you have it. Top 10 movies of the year. Stay tuned for our ten, top 10 most anticipated movies of 2018. I had a great time doing this again. Look at the smile on this guy's face. He loved it. <laughs> Greatest character development of the year, Steve Harrington. Love that guy. Yeah. Steve Ferrara. Potentially. All right. Thanks for watching. See you all later. <laughs>